Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are doing perfect competition in the supply curve, which is chapter 12 of our textbook, which is Microeconomics by Krupman, Wells, Owen, Parkinson, the fourth Canadian edition. Now in this chapter, we are essentially looking at how a firm and a perfectly competitive market works. So what is a perfectly competitive market or what do we mean by perfect competition? Perfectly competitive market is a market that consists of many small firms each producing a similar or homogenous product for sale and then earning profits. Now, some necessary conditions for perfect competition are that there are many buyers and sellers. Each seller has a very small market share. What do we mean by market share? Market share is essentially the fraction of the total industry output accounted by the producer's output. So, for example, if a firm is producing QI and the total industry output is Q, each firm's fraction of the total industry output is extremely small. So the idea over here is that you produce as a firm a very, very small fraction of the total industry output. This means that both buyers and sellers in this market are price takers. When you have a, more, a small market share as a producer, you have no ability to set the price. You are a price taker. Whatever the market determines as a price, you're going to produce and sell at that price. Likewise, with many, many buyers, buyers individually have no effect on the price. They have no effect on what the price is going to be as an individual. So both buyers and sellers are price takers. They cannot individually have any effect on what the market price is going to be. Next important condition for perfect competition is that the product produced by all firms is homogenous or is it, it's very, very similar. It's exactly the same. This ensures that if any one of them charges a higher price, nobody will essentially buy from that producer. Everyone buys the exact same product for somebody else who is selling it for relatively cheaper. Therefore, you can see with homogenous product, no independent seller can increase or change the price. Third condition for perfect competition is that there is easy entry and exit. So productive resources are very mobile. You can easily bring more resources into the industry. And if need be, you can exit the industry easily. So there are no barriers to entry. Neither are there any conditions to enforce exit of firms from this industry. Lastly, we have well-informed buyers and sellers. So we have perfect information. Everybody knows the quality of the product that the firm is selling and everybody has full information. So we have certain conditions over here that need to be fulfilled in order for the firm of, to be operating under, under a perfectly competitive market structure. Many buyers and sellers, product is identical, easy of uh, ease of entry and exit, and lastly, perfect information or very well-informed buyers and sellers. A common example of perfectly competitive market would be your produce market or agricultural products, farm products. When you have many, many sellers and many, many buyers buying essentially the exact same product. So you see free entry and exit. We have homogenous product. We have many buyers and sellers and information is perfect for everyone. You can easily identify the quality of a banana sold by farmer A versus farmer B and so on and so forth. So you see uh, for wheat, barley, grain, uh, agricultural produce, most of these goods, we have perfectly competitive market structure in place. So these are good examples to understand how a perfectly competitive market works. Next, we want to look at what will happen uh, in a within a firm which is operating under perfectly competitive market structure. Here we remember we have to see what is the goal for a producer. For a firm, the goal is profit maximization. Now what is profit? Profit is simply total revenue minus your total costs. Please remember that costs over here are your opportunity cost of production. So we are taking into account all explicit and implicit costs of production. Profit is essentially just revenue minus costs. And our goal is now to maximize this profit while operating under a perfectly competitive market structure. Let's just review some revenue concepts. Now, for a firm under perfect competition, revenue is simply price times the output produced by the firm. So price is the given by the market, and this is the output produced by the firm. Marginal revenue is the change in total revenue because of one additional unit sold. So by how much does your total revenue changes when you produce and sell one additional unit? That's our marginal revenue. 
Average revenue is revenue per unit, so total revenue divided by quantity, not average revenue will always equal price. So average revenue will always be equal to the market price because remember the firm under perfect competition is not dictating its own price, it's a price taker. So whatever the market determines as a price, that is also the average revenue for this firm under perfectly competitive market structure. Now, how much should we produce? If you are a firm operating under perfect competition, what should be your ideal or optimal quantity? So let's look at an example for Noelle's farm, which is producing trees. And the market price that she's working with is $72 per tree. So here we have some information. We have output produced by Noelle's farm in the first column. We can also see the total cost that she incurs as she, incre as she increases her output. We can easily calculate total revenue because remember revenue simply P times Q. So given her output times quantity, we can easily fill up this column. And lastly, we have the profit column, which is total revenue minus total cost. Now cost note are already given to us. Note when Noel is producing zero units or zero trees, her total cost is still, still $560. That tells you that we are operating in the short run for this firm. And this is her, this 560 is her fixed cost for producing any amount of output. Regardless of the level of production, fixed cost will always remain 560. As she produces some positive amount, her total cost rises because of the variable costs associated with production. So let's fill up these columns quickly. P times Q will give us revenue for any level of production. So we have total revenue rising from zero all the way to $5,040. Total revenue minus total cost gives us our profit, which is initially negative, but as she increases her production, we can see her profit rises. So what would be the optimal quantity for this firm to produce if the goal is profit maximization? The answer is pretty straightforward. Noel would ideally want to have profits which are maximum at $722, corresponding to 50 trees. So we have our optimal quantity, Q star, where profit is at its maximum possible. So the goal of profit maximization can be easily seen in this particular table example. Another way to look at profit maximization is through marginal analysis. And for that, let's look at what is marginal revenue. Marginal revenue, remember, is the change in your total revenue because of one additional unit sold. So as Noelle is producing more output, her total revenue is rising. Now Noelle is a firm under a perfectly competitive market structure. This is not the revenue of the entire industry. This is the revenue for one particular firm. So by how much does marginal revenue, or sorry, total revenue increases as she produces 10 more trees. So that would be 720 divided by 10. So the marginal revenue for the first 10 trees is around $72. Again, as production increases from 10 to 20, revenue increases from 720 to 1440. And again, that's a change of 720 divided by 10 additional units produced. So your marginal revenue is again 72. And this will, uh, we can just you can repeat the same process for any level of production over here and calculate our marginal revenue column. And what you'll note over here is that the marginal revenue for each additional unit produced is exactly the same as the price that the mar that the firm was facing. And remember our price was in this example, $72. So marginal revenue for a firm under perfectly competitive market structure is always equal to price. And this price, remember, is not controlled by the firm, but in fact is controlled by the overall market dynamics. Demand supply equilibrium from chapter three is giving us the market price and marginal revenue is exactly the same as, uh, as the market price. So we can now use this information to plot some diagrams. Here I have the market diagram, downward sloping demand curve for the market, upward sloping supply curve for the market. Market equilibrium gives us a market price of $72 and equilibrium quantity in the market as 10,000 trees per month. Now, if you want to calculate or show the total revenue for the firm, Noel's farm particularly, you can see Noel's farm's revenue rises at a constant rate of $72. So total revenue rises from zero 
to a higher level but every time she produces an additional tree her revenue rises by 72 we just saw that when we calculated our marginal revenue remember marginal revenue is a change in total revenue because of one additional unit produced which is essentially just the slope of your total revenue curve so her total revenue is rising at a constant rate if we were to plot the marginal revenue curve marginal revenue is now constant at the market price of 72 dollars so it's a perfectly elastic curve or a horizontal curve with the intercept of 72. so marginal revenue for a firm under perfect competition is always the same so it's a horizontal straight line at the market price note that this revenue is for the firm and not for the entire market demand curve when we do the total revenue curve for the entire market that was a maximum function in chapter 6. This is total revenue for the firm operating under a perfectly competitive market structure. So this is rising at a constant rate of 72 or whatever is the market price. Now for a price taker firm, remember marginal revenue is constant. This will also help us determine what is the demand curve for this firm. Note that if any firm increases the price above 72, it's selling a homogenous product, so nobody will end up buying from this firm. So the quantity demanded by this particular firm or from this particular firm will fall to zero. So what we're seeing over here is that a firm in the perfect competition can sell as much as it likes at the current market price. Its marginal rev revenue curve is horizontal at that market price. And this marginal revenue curve is also the perfectly elastic demand curve that this firm faces. Because if it increases the price, quantity demanded for this particular firm's product will go down to zero. So this marginal revenue curve, perfectly elastic at 72, is also the, the demand curve that this particular individual firm faces under a perfectly competitive market structure. Now that we understand what marginal revenue is, let's apply the marginal analysis to find our profit maximizing output. Now recall that what is marginal analysis? The principle of marginal analysis simply says that we're weighing the marginal benefit versus the marginal cost. The optimal amount of any activity that we're trying to pursue would be the uh, would be the level of that activity at which marginal benefit exactly equals marginal cost. We applied this in principle in chapter 10. We applied this principle way back in chapter 2 as well. Now we are doing, going to do the same for the firm operating under a particular market structure. Note that for a firm, when it wants to maximize its profit, the optimal quantity that it wants to produce would be now where the marginal cost of the last unit produced will be exactly equal to the marginal revenue of the last unit produced. So we are trying to find the optimal Q where marginal revenue exactly equals the marginal cost. So our optimal quantity rule is where MC equals MR. This will be the quantity at which your profit is at its maximum possible. Now, why am I saying that at this optimal quantity, marginal revenue will be equal to marginal cost? Simply saying, when a firm produces another unit, it will always incur some additional cost. And when it produces a new unit, it will also in, uh, earn some extra or additional revenue. What we want to see is whether the additional revenue is higher than the additional cost. If the additional revenue or marginal revenue is higher than the marginal cost, the firm will end up producing more because by doing so, it will add to its profits. Whereas if the marginal revenue of the additional unit produced is lower than the marginal cost, then it makes sense for the firm to produce less in order to add to its profits. Because if it goes ahead and produce more, it will actually reduce its profitability. So it doesn't want to do that. So in order to increase its profits in this particular situation, it should reduce production. And therefore, when marginal revenue equals marginal cost, now profit cannot be increased by producing more. It cannot be increased by producing less. Therefore, profit must be at its maximum possible. So our optimal quantity is where marginal revenue exactly equals marginal cost. So that's our optimal quantity rule or the profit maximization rule for a firm that is operating in a given market structure.
for now we are working with a perfectly competitive market structure now remember for a price taking firm marginal revenue always equals price so this is already what we are working with it's a firm which has no control over the price so its marginal revenue we saw for noel's farm was always equal to the market price of 72 now we also know that the optimal quantity rule is that marginal revenue should equal marginal cost. We can put these two together and therefore say that for a firm under perfect competition, the optimal quantity rule is where price equals marginal cost. Let's go ahead and find now the optimal quantity for Noel's firm using marginal analysis. So some of these columns are, columns are same as before. We have quantity produced by Noel's firm in the first one, first column. Then I have total cost in the third column. But instead of just jumping to the total cost, I also have calculated the variable cost for Noel's firm. Note that this is our fixed cost. When Noel is producing zero trees, her fixed cost is 560. So for any given level of production, we can deduct the fixed cost and find out the corresponding variable cost also. Now, marginal cost, remember, is the change in total cost because of change in production. And costs only rise because of variable cost. So we could have also calculated the marginal cost through change in variable cost because of change in output. So just a quick revision of, you know, what we learned in chapter 11. So this is our marginal cost column. Next, I have marginal revenue. Marginal revenue for Noel's farm we have already calculated. We know for a firm under perfect competition, marginal revenue is always equal to the market price and that is 72 in our case so regardless of her level of production each additional tree will always give her 72 dollars more now this last one is interesting this is the change in profit or the net gain from a tree comparing of comparison of marginal revenue versus marginal cost so if she produces and sells another tree how much of dollars, uh, how much of a dollar amount does it add to her total profit? So for the first 10 trees, each one of them, it adds $8 to her profit. Next 10 trees, each one of them adds $48 to her profits. Why? Because for this, these ones, marginal revenue is exceeding marginal cost. So the net change in profit is now positive. And this continues still about over here for sorry actually this is also higher continues till the first 50 trees after the first 50 trees when she produces 10 additional trees her marginal cost is now actually higher than marginal revenue for each of these last 10 additional trees so if she was to produce this last 10 trees over here and take her production level up to 60 each one of these trees will actually cause her profits to go down by eight dollars so being a rational economic agent she would never want that and she would stop at 50 trees where her additional trees are actually causing her profits to rise by $8 each. So her optimal quantity would be where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost or at least is higher than marginal cost. So in our case, the highest level quantity which corresponds to marginal revenue exceeding marginal cost and that gives us our optimal quantity of 50 trees so you can see if she produces up to 50 trees her profits are going to go up after this level of production her profits are actually going down this is negative change in profit so she would never want to produce more than 50 trees so whether you're looking at the optimal quantity of trying to find the optimal quantity by calculating total profit or through the marginal analysis your answer will be still the same. Our optimal quantity is where marginal revenue is equal to or at least higher than marginal cost. Let's look at the same example in terms of our diagram. So here we have our marginal revenue curve, which is equal to price for a firm under perfect competition. So it's horizontal at $72. Marginal cost initially fell, reached a minimum and then rose. So that's our marginal cost curve. And now you can see our optimal quantity is given by this equilibrium point E, where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, and that happened at around 50 trees. So that's our optimal quantity or profit maximizing quantity for this particular firm. Now note that whenever marginal revenue is higher than marginal cost, change in profit is positive. So it makes sense to produce more. This is this distance over here that I'm focusing on. And when marginal cost exceeds marginal revenue, 
for any given level of quantity. Now it makes sense to produce less. Why? Because your change in profit is negative. Producing these levels of production will cause your profits to go down. So you don't want to do that. So a rational firm manager will reduce production. So you will see your optimal quantity will always be in this case at this level where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost or the highest level of quantity corresponding to marginal revenue exceeding marginal cost. Now, let's summarize what we have done so far. In our short-run equilibrium for a firm where we were working with some fixed costs, two things are true. Market price is such that, that the market is clearing. So behind the scenes, we have equilibrium in the market. So this demand supply is for the, for the market and this is giving us some market price. So the market is clearing, there's no excess supply or excess demand in this market. And at this market price, each firm is going to maximize its profits. So whatever their price that they're facing, all firms are going to choose some optimal quantity which will maximize their profits. But how large are these profits? In the short-term equilibrium, these profits can be positive, zero, or negative. So we have three possibilities. We can be working with a firm which is operating at short-term equilibrium and earning positive economic profits. Prof positive economic profits means that your revenue exceeds your total cost. So profits are positive. Now, this can be alternatively written as where price is higher than ATC. Why am I converting this into this? Because remember that total revenue divided by quantity will just give you price. So if I divide both sides of this inequality by quantity, revenue can be converted into price. And total cost divided by quantity is simply your per unit cost or your ATC. So in short, we can say a firm is profitable whenever price exceeds ATC. Secondly, we know that firms in, in short run equilibrium could be breaking even. So they could be earning zero economic profits. So with, this is when your profits are zero. Alternatively, again, using the same methodology, we can say zero profits or breaking even simply implies that price is equal to ATC. Price and per unit cost of production are exactly the same. And lastly, in the short run equilibrium, a firm under perfect competition could be incurring a loss. So this is a situation where your revenues are lower than your costs. So you are earning economic losses. And alternatively, we can say economic losses mean that price must be now lower than the per unit cost. It's lower than our ATC for this particular firm. So all three situations are possible in the short-run equilibrium for a firm operating in perfect competition. Let's translate this into our diagram. So how do we show a firm earning profitability, breaking even, or incurring losses on our diagram that we just drew for the perfectly competitive firm's demand curve, its marginal cost, etc. So we want to visualize this different levels of profits on a diagram. Before we do visualize that or put it on a piece of paper, First, just re let's just revisit the profit equation. So I want total revenue and total cost to be depicted on my diagram. Typically, the diagrams or the curves that we're working with are working with marginal cost, AVC, ATC, etc. So I want to translate this into something more tangible in terms of a diagram or more easily depictable on our diagram. So I can rewrite my profit equation as total revenue is P times Q and total cost is per unit cost times quantity. So all I've done is expanded these two expressions. Now let's take quantity common. So we are left with price minus ATC times quantity. So you can immediately see that price minus ATC, this difference over here, is simply giving you your per unit profit or loss. And times quantity will give you your total profit or total loss. So remember, price lower than eight, higher than ATC, is positive economic profits. Price lower than ATC would be negative economic profits. And price equal to ATC would be breaking even because zero times quantity is zero. It doesn't matter how much you're producing. If your per unit profit is zero, your total profits will be zero. If your per unit profit is positive, your total profits will be positive. If your per unit profit is negative, or it's a loss, you will be earning overall losses for this firm. 
So the idea over here is remember that your optimal quantity could be corresponding to any of these three situations. You could be maximizing profits as a positive number. You could be minimizing losses. So if there are some losses are minimum possible at that optimal quantity. Or lastly, you could have a situation where you have zero economic profits or the firm is breaking even. Let's put them on the diagram. So I'll start with a firm which is earning positive economic profits. We're assuming the price is $72, same situation as before. So we want to first step is find the optimal quantity. Optimal quantity is where MR equals MC or price equals MC. So the first step is to now superimpose my marginal cost curve on this diagram. And that gives us our optimal quantity of 50. Next, remember our profit equation is the difference between price and ATC times quantity times this level of production. So what I need over here is my ATC curve. So let's superimpose our ATC curve on this diagram. Note when you superimpose the ATC curve, marginal cost intersects the ATC at its minimum point. So this point C is our minimum cost output level, which is 40. And this is where your ATC is at its minimum possible around $56. Now, the, this is not the cost of production or the A per unit cost for producing these 50 trees. For these 50 trees, the height of the ATC at this point will give me, our, give me or give us a per unit cost for this level of production. So at 50, the height of the curve is given by point Z, which is around $57.6. So the distance between E and Z is our per unit profit because price is higher than ATC. So this is price minus ATC times our quantity of 50. So per unit profit times this quantity will give you your total profit. So total profit is this shaded blue area which is showing us positive economic profits. Why are these positive? Because remember price is higher than the ATC. Whenever price is higher than the cost of production or per unit cost of production, we know that the firm is earning positive economic profits. Now let's do a situation in which the firm is earning zero economic profits or is breaking even. Now remember at price of 72, Noelle's firm was earning positive economic profits. So for her, cost is not changing, but assuming cost side is still the same. So for her firm to produce a quantity at which she's earning zero economic profits, that would necessitate that her price has gone down. So now we're working with the lower price of $56. Remember, whatever is the market price, Noel's firm take that price as given, and that is also their marginal revenue for each additional unit produced. So marginal revenue is now equal to price of $56, and it's your perfectly elastic demand curve for this firm. In order to find the optimal quantity, step one is where price equals marginal cost. So all we have to do is superimpose our MC and this optimal quantity rule gives us quantity of 40, 40 trees. So at 40 trees, she's earning her pro maximum profits. If she produces more than 40, marginal cost exceeds marginal revenue. So that will necessarily make her profits go down. If she produces less than 40, she is letting go of these opportunities, so it makes sense to keep on increasing her production. So optimal quantity rule applied, price equals marginal cost, and that is giving us 40 trees. Next, we want to see what is her profit. Profit, remember, is price minus ATC per unit profit times quantity. So in order to see my per unit profit, we have to superimpose our ATC curve. And we superimpose our ATC, and that interestingly gives us a per unit cost of exactly the same as our price, which is 56. Note that the minimum point of this ATC curve is at 40 trees at a per unit cost of $56. So when price is equal to your minimum ATC, that is the break even price for this firm. Because price is equal to ATC, it's not earning any positive profit, it's not making a loss. Price equals ATC, it's earning zero per unit profit. So for if each tree it's earning zero profit times this 40, her profits are actually zero. So unlike the previous diagram where we had a specific area which is showing positive economic profits, we have now no difference between price and ATC. 
so we cannot identify any such area so if we have zero economic profits where price is equal to minimum of atc this is also referred to as our break even price whenever price will be equal to the minimum point of our atc that would be the break even price higher than that higher than 56 the firm will earn positive economic profits if the price is lower than 56 dollars now we know it will necessarily earn economic losses so in this case price is exactly equal to minimum of atc at 56 dollars interestingly note that the marginal cost curve always intersects the atc curve at its minimum point so at point c again so whenever firm is equaling uh, is earning zero economic profits or it's operating at break-even price all three are now equal price is equal to minimum of atc and it is also equal to mc so for breaking even we have all three equal to each other price equal to minimum atc equal to mc because marginal cost always intersects atc at its minimum third situation is when noel's farm can earn losses in the short run it's still producing some optimal quantity but at that optimal quantity it's earning losses so let's look at that now we have already decided or you know we already referred to our previous diagram and said and we said if price is lower than minimum of atc it will necessarily earn losses so here note we have assumed the market price to be equal to forty dollars so noel's firm take the market prices given whatever is happening in the market causes causing the market price to go down it has pushed the price to go down to forty dollars this 40 is now the marginal revenue for noel's firm in order to find the optimal quantity step one superimpose your marginal cost curve so that's our marginal cost intersecting our marginal revenue at point a which gives us the optimal quantity for this firm so you can see as price is going down optimal quantity is also reduced so now noel will make only or produce only 30 trees the minimum cost output for this firm is not at 30 that was somewhere at 40 trees right so we know that minimum atc was 56 dollars and that corresponded to 40 trees so don't confuse these two this point c is where mc intersects atc but the optimal quantity is where marginal cost equals the price or marginal cost equals the marginal revenue so that's our point a when we're producing now 30 trees what is the profit earned by the firm in order to see that we have to look at the height of the atc at this particular quantity so what's the per unit cost of producing these 30 trees that is given by point y and you can see atc is higher than the profit price so the distance between y and a is your per unit profit or per unit loss in this case since this number will be now a negative price is lower than atc so p minus atc would be a negative number per unit loss times this total quantity of 30 will give us the orange area which is the total losses earned by this firm in our case price is 40 atc is 58.67 so the firm is earning a per unit loss of around 18.67 dollars 18.67 times this 30 will give you the area of this orange rectangle which is the total losses earned by the firm when price is 40 dollars and it's lower than our atc curve so in short whenever price line is above your atc the firm will earn positive economic profits when the price is at the minimum of a minimum of atc it will earn zero economic profits and when the price is below the atc the firm will necessarily earn now economic losses at its optimal quantity optimal quantity rule does not change it's always where marginal revenue or in our case price equals marginal cost The second part of this chapter focuses on the output decision of the firm, which is essentially saying to produce or not to produce. Remember Shakespeare when he says famously to be or not to be. So what makes a firm decide whether it should be producing any a positive amount or would it rather shut down? So this output decision 
is going to lead us to the shutdown rule for the firm. Just like we had the optimal quantity rule, we're now going to analyze the situation which will help us determine what makes a firm decide that I want to produce and maybe incur a loss or I'd rather shut down. In order to understand the situation, let's look at a hypothetical question. Does a loss mean a firm should necessarily shut down? A loss is, remember, when your price is below your ATC, so you're earning a per unit loss. And regardless of how much you produce, you will always end up with total losses. Your profits will be a negative number. So a loss does not mean an immediate shutdown. Some firms, you will note that in the real life, continue to operate even if they are making losses. So you can think of a you know small town up in the mountains, which is essentially near a ski resort. Some of those mom and pop shops or the corner stores will remain operational even when the ski season is long gone. So they don't have enough customers and they're but still they're still remaining operational. So what makes them remain makes them induces them to remain operational while earning losses? Whereas in the same town, you will see certain businesses shutting down entirely for at least three, four months, and they will again start to operate once the business activity picks up. So why do some firms shut down and others don't? Others continue to operate while earning losses. So one thing is clear, not everyone shuts down when you earn a loss. Now, remember to understand this question or to this uh, puzzle, we have to remember or the role of fixed costs. Whether you're operating or you're shutting down, you are incurring some fixed costs. These fixed costs in the well farms case were $560 and these must be paid. Whether you're producing zero units or you're producing 100 trees. So regardless of your level of production, that fixed cost amount must be incurred by the firm. Perfectly competitive firms will always use the optimal quantity rule to produce some positive amount, and that is where the price equals marginal cost, with only one exception. They will choose to shut down, meaning not operate, if their revenue is not enough to cover their variable costs. If their revenue fails to cover their variable costs, they will necessarily shut down. Why is that? Let's look at the why. Why does it make sense for a firm to shut down when it can't even cover its variable costs? Let's revisit Newell's firm to understand the why of this decision-making process. Should the firm shut down or not? Now note here I'm working with a much lower price of 30. If price is 30, your marginal revenue is 30. So that's the first thing you should remember. And of course, if price is 30, our total revenue will be now different than before. Now, before I go into the filling up of this table, let's first look at what happens if the firm shuts down. If this firm shuts down, meaning it does not produce anything, so shutdown is simply when you're not producing any output, your output is zero, we'll see that quantity is zero, total revenue is zero, variable cost is zero. So if you're not producing anything, you're not earning anything, you have no variable costs, but you're still stuck with your fixed costs. So your losses are exactly equal to your fixed cost. Total revenue minus your total cost is exactly equal to the fixed costs you have incurred. But now as a loss, this is a negative 560. So remember, when you shut down, you still have to pay your fixed costs and they translate, translate into your economic losses. Now, what happens if the firm starts to produce? If it starts to produce, you can see it starts earning revenue. So its revenue is increasing. But as it's producing more, it's also incurring variable costs. So its total costs rise above 560. So we have variable costs rising, total costs rising as the firm is remaining operational. Now note here that as this firm is producing more, instead of making its losses smaller, with this price of 30, its losses are actually becoming higher and higher. So what should the firm do? What would be the optimal quantity? Profit is not positive at any level of production. So profit maximization is now can be, you know, can be translated as loss minimization. What would be the optimal quantity at which loss for this firm would be minimized? So with a price of 30, it would make sense 
to have your losses minimum possible at 560 and therefore shut down. So if you're in a situation like this, that where when you're producing more and it's actually increasing your losses, it just makes sense to shut down. Here, note that your revenues never covered your variable costs. Just compare these two columns over here. Revenues are always lower than variable costs when we're producing some positive amount. What this means is that if your revenues are not able to cover your variable cost, they will of course not cover any part of your fixed costs, which were 560. So if your revenues are not covering your variable costs, they will definitely not feed into your fixed costs and therefore you will always end up with bigger and bigger losses by continuing to produce more. So in this type of situation where your revenues are not covering your variable costs, it makes sense for the firm to shut down. You should only produce some positive quantity if your revenues at least cover your variable costs. Because once they have covered your variable cost and they are you know, over and above your variable cost, then at least a part of this 560 will also be covered. And that will make your losses smaller. So if your revenues do not cover our variable costs, it makes sense to then just shut down because by remaining operational, you will just continue to increase your losses. So using this example, we can easily say that a firm should remain operational if it's able to cover its variable costs. You're able to pay your workers. Remember, if your workers are your, for example, your variable input. If you cannot even pay your wages to your workers, you're not able to cover your variable costs, you should shut down. So if you're remaining operational, that means you are able to cover your variable costs. If you are unable to cover your variable costs, it makes sense for you to shut down. Output should be zero. Remember here in our example, we saw that if you continue to produce in a situation where you're not able to cover your variable costs, by remaining operational, you will just make your losses bigger. So you don't want that and therefore just simply shut down if your revenues are not enough to cover your variable costs. We, this is essentially our shutdown rule. Shutdown rule is the equality between revenue and variable cost. This is a situation where the firm is indifferent. It can choose to remain operational or it can shut down. We can translate this into price versus ABC. How did I come from here to here? Remember, all I've done is divided both sides of the equation by quantity. So total revenue divided by quantity is our price and total variable cost divided by quantity is our per unit variable cost or AVC. So we can say the shutdown rule is where price equals AVC. If price is higher than AVC, the firm should remain operational. It translates into revenue being enough to cover your variable costs. If price is lower than ABC, then that translates into shutting down. It will make sense for you to shut down but because by remaining operational, you will make your losses bigger. So the shutdown rule is where price equals ABC. So higher price, re definitely remain operational and choose the optimal quantity per the per optimal quantity rule. If price is lower than ABC, you will make your losses bigger by remaining operational, so you should shut down. Let's look at the optimal quantity rule and the shutdown rule together on our diagram. These two rules together will essentially give us the supply curve for the firm in the short run. So this is our firm's cost curves, AVC and ATC, typical cost curves, you know, minimum functions like we saw in chapter 11. Let's superimpose these two curves with a marginal cost curve. Remember the MC intersects the two ATCs and the two average cost curves, ATC and ABC at their respective minimums. So this point is the minimum point of ABC, which is at around $40. So this is our minimum ABC. And this is where the marginal cost intersects our ATC and that was at $56. But now we are more inter interested in this particular point. Note that when price is equal to minimum of AVC, which is $40, this is our shut down price. Any price above it, the firm should produce. Any price below $40 for this particular firm, it should shut down. So if price is below 40, that's your shut down price. You will not produce anything and quantity will be zero. So that's our shut down price.
If price is higher than 40, you will just simply follow your optimal quantity rule. So let's say price is $50. Your optimal quantity is where price equals MC, which is 35 units. If price rises above 50 to $56, then you will again follow your optimal quantity rule, which is price equal MC gives you point C and you will produce 40, uh, 40 units. So you can see as price is rising above 40, the firm is also producing more and more. And how is it using its quantity? It's using its quantity along its marginal cost curve. And we can extend this to various prices over here. Higher the price, higher is the quantity according to this red segment of our MC. What is this red segment? This is the portion of your marginal cost curve which is above your minimum AVC. So this segment of marginal cost is essentially our supply curve of the firm. It tells us how as price rises, how does the firm respond. With higher price, it produces more along this marginal cost curve. As price falls, it produces less along this marginal cost curve. However, this is only effective as a supply curve till the minimum point of AVC. Below $40, which is the minimum or minimum AVC or our shutdown price, quantity supplied will immediately fall to zero because the firm in this situation, like Noel's firm, would never produce any quantity if price is below 40 because it doesn't cover its variable cost. It's even unable to pay for its raw materials, for its workers, so it will definitely not remain operational. So the marginal cost of the firm over and above its minimum AVC is the short-run individual supply curve of the firm. Any price level above minimum of AVC, firm follows the optimal quantity rule. Price equals MC will give us our optimal quantity. However, if price is lower than minimum, minimum of AVC, the firm simply shuts down. Its optimal quantity is zero because it's not covering its variable costs. It is ceasing to produce any level of production. In the last part of the chapter, we look at long-run equilibrium and how does it occur? What does it mean for output produced for the firm, output produced by the industry, the prices that we're seeing in the long-run equilibrium, what's happening to profits? And we'll see that output, price and profits will be driven by forces of entry and exit. The entry and exit condition that was necessary for a perfectly competitive market structure is now going to have a huge effect on what happens to output price and profits of a typical firm. Now, before we go there, first let's recall what is the industry supply curve. Industry supply curve is simply showing you a relationship between price of a good and the total output of the industry as a whole. So this is the industry supply. And in the short run equilibrium, when we saw the industry market supply equaling industry market demand, we saw that quantity supplied equals quantity demanded such that the number of producers that we are working with was given. So we were assuming everything else held constant. So this is your short run market equilibrium. Supply and demand are intersecting such that nothing is changing over here. So demand is the same stationary demand curve. Supply curve is static. Number of producers are not increasing or decreasing. Not entry and exit will affect this supply curve. So for now, in a short run equilibrium, we're assuming None of that is happening. So holding everything else constant, market price is P star, and this P star is going to be taken as given for a typical firm. And when the firm takes that market price is given in the short run, it could be earning positive economic profits, it could be earning losses, or it could be breaking even. And we saw in our short run analysis that all three situations are possible. You're choosing your optimal quantity according to the market price, but it could be giving you losses, profits, or giving you zero economic profits. Now, let's see what happens in the long run. In the long run, the industry supply curve is structured in a way that we're going to give us, give us in sufficient time for entry or exit to have occurred. So the market equilibrium in the long run would be such that, that the quantity supplied equals quantity demanded in the whole industry as a whole, given that enough time has elapsed for any exit or entry to have occurred. So this is essentially a transition from a short run equilibrium in the market towards a long run equilibrium. So in the long run, we'll see eventually that firms will end up breaking even. 
in long run equilibrium there will be no zero economic or sorry there won't be any positive economic profits or losses but firms will be typically breaking even in the long run so let's see how that occurs we can start with a short-term market equilibrium where demand and supply are intersecting each other market price is 72 and industry quantity is 500. now this is for let's say tree market uh, the market in which noel's farm was operating market price is 72 Noel's firm, like an individual firm in this market, has no control over the price, so they're going to take this price as given. At this market price of 72, Ma Noel is going to produce, according to her, marginal cost curve. Remember, her MC is her supply curve, the segment of MC, which is above her AVC. So her AVC is somewhere down below. We're not worried about it for now. So given the market price of 72, she follows the optimal quantity rule, and her optimal quantity is 50 trees. And when she's producing these 50 trees, what is her per unit profit? Her per unit profit is given by the distance between E and Z. So height of the ATC for these 50 trees is given by point Z. So price minus ATC is her per unit profit times her quantity gives us a total area of this green area A, which is her positive economic profits. So price of 72 gives us positive economic profits for a typical firm now because of these positive economic profits what is going to happen if we give sufficient time for firms to enter or exit profitability is going to induce new firms to enter if typical firms are earning positive economic profits number of firms goes up and as your number of firms goes up supply curve shifts to the right and as our supply curve shifts to the right market price is going to be driven down and industry output is going up this is simple dynamics that we learned in chapter three a shift to the right of the supply curve because of higher number of producers more producers are inclined or induced to enter this firm enter this industry that pushes the market price down and industry output up to 750. now as price is going down how does it affect the incumbent firm a lower price causes Noel's farm to produce less than before because she's no longer working with a price of 72 instead a price of 64. She starts to produce less. So she's moving along her marginal cost curve. So a lower price causes the incumbent firm's quantity to go down. Now, if you're producing less, you're earning less per unit. This is, of course, going to drive down your profits also. So your profits are going down. Note the area yellow over here on our diagram. Noel is now facing a price of 64, producing the optimal quantity of 45 trees. At this 45 quantity, her per unit cost is given by the point Y. So D minus Y is her new profit per unit times her quantity, gives us this total area, shaded area, or yellow area, or identified as area B. So her profits are definitely lower than before compared to this area A. Now, this process will continue till profits are still positive. So these are driven down, but they're still positive. So the process continues. Supply curve continues to increase, shift to the right, pushing the market price down, industry output higher. So this is continuing to happen, but till when? This will continue to happen or new firms will continue to enter this industry as long as we have positive economic profits or as long as price is higher than the minimum of ATC. Once price is pushed down to minimum of ATC of a typical firm, as we can see over here in the second panel, at point C, we've moved all the way from E, D to this C. So this continues till price is equal to minimum of ATC. At this point, what happens? Profit for a typical firm like Noel's are driven down to zero. Now, if we are earning zero economic profits, is there any incentive for a new firm to enter? Absolutely not. So we'll see that this is our long run equilibrium. In the long run, prices will be driven down to minimum of ATC for a typical firm and the individual economic profits will be zero. So all firms are now breaking even in the long run. Why is this a long run equilibrium? Because once you have zero economic profits, no further incentive for firms to enter this industry. So in the long run, if we started with positive economic profits, price will be driven down, industry output would be higher, 
incumbent firms output will be lower than before and their profits will be driven down to zero. So if you're assuming all firms to have similar cost structure, in the long run, all firms will be earning zero economic profits. Let's apply the same logic to a situation where a typical firm is actually earning losses at the market price. So over here we have in panel A, a short run equilibrium in the industry. So that's our demand curve for the market, supply curve for the market, and it is giving us an equilibrium price of $40. Now note this price of 40 is taken for, is the given price or the firm is a price taker. So they have to work with this price. At this price of 40, this is their marginal revenue for a typical firm. They choose their optimal quantity at point A where price equals MC. So the step one for a firm's optimal quantity is always where price equals MC. So they will choose to produce 30 trees. So that gives their, their gives them their optimal quantity. At this optimal quantity, are they earning a loss or are they breaking even or are they earning positive economic profits? For that, we have to look at the height of ATC. Now this price, the blue line is lower than the ATC that immediately tells us the firm is earning a loss. So distance between Y and A is loss per unit times this quantity gives us this total area, the orange area as the loss earned by a typical firm at the price of $40 per unit. So optimal quantity is such that the firm is earning losses. If a typical firm in this industry is earning losses, some of them will not be able to sustain these losses in the long run. So what happens? Losses are going to induce exit. Exit means some of these firms are liquidating and exiting this industry. They're using their resources to set up shop in some other type of industry. So exit causes the number of firms to go down and supply starts to decrease. In the market diagram, the supply curve is now shifting to the left. As the supply curve shifts to the left, what happens? Price is being driven up and industry output is going down. So this lower supply causes the market price to go down. Oh, sorry, go up and industry output to go down. So here we see higher price in the long run and lower quantity. As the price goes up, what does it do to the firm's decision making process? The higher price makes the firm produce more. Remember, it's moving along its marginal cost curve, which is its supply curve. So for the incumbent firm, the higher price makes them produce more. And they're producing more and earning more. What do you think happens to their losses? If you're producing more and earning more, your losses are becoming smaller. So these losses are becoming smaller and smaller. This process will continue. So losses will again induce exit, exit will cause supply to decrease, lower supply will push the market price up, industry output down, higher price will further make incumbent firms to produce more and more and reduce their losses. So this process continues till when? It continues till price increases to minimum of ATC, so all the way to point C. So in the long run, price will increase to minimum of ATC, and what happens when price is equal to minimum of ATC? A typical firm is now again earning zero economic profits, or we can say firms are now breaking even in this industry in the long run. So in the long run, when we started with a loss situation, price is going to be driven up, industry output is going to be lower. For an incumbent firm, their production is going to increase because with a higher price, they're producing more, and their losses are going to be driven to zero. So positive economic profits induced entry in our previous discussion and now negative profits or losses are going to induce exit and in the long run we'll see long run equilibrium means all firms in this, in this market will be earning zero economic profits or they'll be breaking even. We can use this analysis to look at the difference between a short run industry supply curve and the long run industry supply curve. Typically you will see that the short run industry supply curve is steeper. It's less elastic compared to the long run industry supply curve. Why do you think is that? In order to see the difference between them or to explain what the rationale behind the, you know, the, the long run supply curve being more elastic, all you have to do is recall what we just learned. 
when we typically see prices higher in the short run, what do higher prices do? Higher prices means firms are typically earning positive economic profits, but those positive economic profits are going to induce entry. Entry means that we are going to see new firms enter, push the price down, and industry output up. Therefore, in the long run, you will see that prices will be definitely slightly lower and industry output will be higher. What happens if we are working with low prices in the short run? Low prices in the short run means typical firms might be earning losses and losses will induce exit. And when we see exit, what happens over time? Exit causes prices to go down and industry output to go, sorry, exit causes prices to go up because supply curve is shifting to the left and industry output to go down. So compared to um, on, a, on, a, on a short run aggregate, a short run industry supply curve, the long run industry supply curve will be consistent with higher prices and lower production levels. So that's why typically the long run industry supply curve will always be relatively elastic compared to the short run industry supply curve. Assuming that we have the underlying cost structure as identical, we can also see how changes in the market demand will lead to entry and exit in the long run and will give shape to some a particular type of long run industry supply curve. So in this situation, we're going to work with three panels. In the first panel, I'm looking at the working of an existing firm when suddenly the market demand increases. In panel B, I'm looking at market equilibrium in the industry as a whole. And we're going to look at what happens when demand supply, or in this case, particularly, initially there is an increase in demand. And in the last panel, we'll focus on what happens to the, what is the decision making process of this incumbent firm or the existing firm as a result of these changes happening in this market not just in the short run, but now focusing more on the long run. So short run response of the incumbent firm, long run response of the incumbent firm or your existing firm, and what's happening in the market, that will be in this middle panel. So let's start with our initial equilibrium of zero economic profit. So we're assuming industry is at its long run equilibrium. Demand and supply are intersecting at point X such that all firms or a typical firm is earning zero economic profits. Zero economic profit, remember, means price is equal to minimum of ATC. So we have no direct box over here, which could be indicating positive profits or losses. So zero economic profits. Now, if suddenly there is an increase in demand, so this is the market demand is rising. So the demand curve shifts to the right. As the demand curve shifts to the right, what happens? Price goes up and so does your industry quantity. So industry output has gone up market price has gone up. Now, because of this higher price, how will the incumbent firm respond? Higher price is going to make the firm produce more along its individual supply curve. Remember, its MC is its individual supply. So with a higher price, it's just going to follow the optimal quantity rule. Instead of producing at point X, it starts producing at point Y. So when price goes up, it causes the incumbent firm to produce more along its MC, just following the basic rationale for the optimal quantity rule. Now, if you were earning zero economic profits and you're now facing a higher price and you're producing more, it's safe to assume that you're earning positive economic profits. So higher demand, which pushed the price up, makes the firm now profitable. If a typical firm is now profitable and most firms are the, have the same cost structure, we'll see that all firms are now profitable or most firms are profitable in this industry. These positive economic profits are going to induce entry of new firms. So in the long run, we'll see entry happening. When entry happens, same story as before, it will increase the number of firms operating in this industry. So it causes the supply curve to increase. So supply curve in our middle panel is no longer S1. In the long run, it gradually increases to S2. And as it increases to S2, higher supply always pushes the price down and industry output up. 
So you can see price is going down and industry output is going up. What happens as a result to the existing firm's profitability? Existing firm was producing at Y because it was producing more because of the higher price of 72. But because of now entry of new firms, price is being pushed down. So it starts producing less. So it starts moving downward along its MC. So as it produces less, this is all happening now in the long run. As price is pushed down, the incumbent firm will start to produce less. Supply curve is given by this MC for the individual firm. So just moving along its supply curve. Lower price, lower quantity. And of course, if you're facing a lower price, you're producing less, your profits are also going to be going down. So because of the increase in demand, our zero economic profits move to positive economic profits, but the positive economic profits induced entry and again are going to drive down profits to zero. So this profit, uh, these profits are not sustainable. Entry is going to reduce these profits eventually to zero. And price is going down. This will keep on going down till price equals again minimum of ATC for a typical firm. So we'll eventually go back to actually point Z over here, which is our minimum cost output level. If we use Noel's example, that would be again at 40 trees. So in the long run, we'll see so industry output is moving from this QX all the way to this QZ. And the market price intermittently went up. So in the short run, it went up, but in the long run, it has gone back to minimum of ATC, which was $56. So the long run, long run supply curve for this industry is this gray line. It is actually perfectly elastic. Some changes in demand might cause profits or losses in the short run, but in the long run, price will go back to minimum of ATC, but industry output in this case is a lot higher than before. You can always do the opposite in this case, assuming that the underlying cost structure is the same for all typical firms. If suddenly there is a decrease in demand, it will push the price down, cause losses for these firms. Losses will cause exit. Exit will push the price up and those losses over time will again be eliminated and you'll go back to your price of minimum of ATC. So what we're saying here is that if nothing else changes, there are no differences in technology, increase in demand or decrease in demand will eventually again lead to zero economic profits in the long run and price will again be equal to minimum of ATC. So that brings us to the end of chapter 12. I hope to see you next week when we'll be doing Monopoly.